and welcome back to another episode of Shore Solutions, the podcast. I am one of your co-hosts, Mara Shore, and of course, the other co-host that I have here who lets me make all the verbal intros is Jay Shore. As everybody knows, Jay is not only Shore Solutions founding partner, Jay's my dad. So I think everybody knows this at this point, but in case you're new to listening to the podcast, give a hello, Jay. Hello, hello, give, hello. There we go. That's, that's for the people that are not watching it. The people that are watching it, I can go like this. The people who are not watching it, hello, and thank you for attending. Perfect. Perfect. So you know, I encourage you watch the video if you want to see Jay give a smile and a wave. But like we always say to all of our clients over the phone, you can hear a smile over the phone. So we'll pretend that the same is true for this podcast. And today's episode, Jay actually had contacted our team saying this is really, a really important content to pay attention to um, a little bit ago. And we thought that this was so important that it wasn't necessarily just for our internal team, project managers, client success managers, marketing, et cetera, to know that it was something we wanted to discuss on an episode of Shore Solutions, the podcast. So today we are going to be talking about what a practice needs to know, whether that's management or ownership or truly both, what a practice needs to know about that tricky little thing everyone calls a 90-day probationary period. And Jay, for the sake of this conversation, we're going to say that that is for, um, whether we're looking to focus on an employee, a contractor, both, how are we, how are you going to take this? Are you going to, are you going to address both perhaps? Maybe an employee on this episode, because an independent contractor, you don't need probationary. They're not entitled to anything. And we'll get into that as we discuss it, but for the sake of this podcast slash webinar, it really is going to be employees. Perfect. So Let's let's get into this. And, and Jay, one thing you and I always state when we talk about anything that is legal uh, or could pertain to legal is that number one, of course, neither one of us are lawyers. Um, and number two, we want to make sure that everyone really acknowledges that you are going to want to contact a healthcare attorney within your state somebody that knows healthcare employee or employee or law. commonwealth or come I always say state and you always chime in I don't know why I haven't picked up on this by now so well, within because I was born and raised in the commonwealth of Pennsylvania but Jay so was I I yeah well but I was <laughs> in Pennsylvania a lot many more years than you were this is true you were a lot of things in many more years than I've been so far though <laughs> That's what happens when you're father daughter, right? Uh, yeah. um, so, so either a state or commonwealth, and knowing that we we always make sure to address that some states or commonwealths are very very different than others, i.e., California versus Florida. Now, Jay and I are both based in Florida. I'm in Orlando, just outside of Orlando, here in Winter Park. And Jay is in South Florida, outside of Fort Lauderdale. He always makes fun. Why do, why do I get to live in Orlando when he is South Florida? I don't know. It just rolls off the tongue. So with that, though, we want to make sure that you're really recognizing that for any specifics that we talk about, these are things we want to make sure you check with legal, legal advice specific to your state. So with that being said, Jay. Or Commonwealth. Or Commonwealth. Jay, can you talk? <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get there. Can you talk about, let's let's start off really obvious. What is a 90-day probationary period for somebody that is an employee? Let's start off with what we deem as that definition. All right. So my definition mm -hmm. is the 90-day probationary period for new hires is really defined as a period of time in which a new employee receives added management education to learn their new job or their new position or whatever it is they were hired for. And the purpose of the probationary period for new hires is basically to postpone or adjust customary employment rules for an employee who is learning about and adapting to the new job or the job position. And look, when we create job descriptions, there's always that last caveat uh, and other duties as assigned. Probation always reminds me of the criminal intent 
that you're on parole, you're on probation. It's like almost an ugly word, a dirty word. Like I'm on probation. Like what did I do wrong? All right. So, but it is what it is. And it's really important that we define um, the probationary period because many people will say to me, well, Jay, well, what happens after a 90 day probation period? So Mara, if that's one of your questions, go ahead and ask it because I'm ready for you. Why, Jay? Many people want to know what happens after a 90 day period. If well, Mara, 90 I'm so days. glad you asked. Okay. <laughs> but there's three possibilities after a probation period. If your performance has been good, then you're going to get confirmed as a permanent employee or permanent as permanent as the practice hired you for. Permanent could even be part time permanent or it could be full time permanent. If not, the company can terminate your employment. And if the company feels that you still have potential to be better at work or your job, they can extend the probation period and give you another chance, meaning, well, okay, let's go from 90 days to six months. All right. And that is the exact reason why it's probationary. Now, in many states and commonwealths, you have to abide by the regular um, statutes as if you were an employee. The state, the Commonwealth, the federal government, um, equal employment, fair labor standards, they don't differentiate between full-time or probationary employees. That really is an internal thing because it can be really broadly defined as a trial period for newly recruited workers. And it's not like a working interview, you know, that somebody comes in and, and want to give you a, a one day working interview. That's not probationary. All right. Which, so on, a, on a side note, we are all for a working interview. However, we do recommend paying that for that candidate for their time spent during a working interview. I'm not talking about an interview where they come in and you just you sit down at a conference table and talk for 45 minutes or an hour. I'm talking about if you have them spend half a day on your job site in your practice and showing their their craft. We do we're a proponent of that. However, make sure that you are paying them and you're not asking them to give you a day of work for free. Okay, so where do you define and where do you draw the line? And I, I love when people ask me this, I don't want to pay for the working interview. Um, and I said, well, then it's an interview and not a working interview. Because really the criteria for that, and I almost insist that you pay, what, what is it really you're doing? Is it four hours? And if it's $20, $25 an hour, if you are really that serious, you're not having every prospective applicant come in and work for four hours, of all right? Of course, of course. You should only be so lucky to have a lot of people that you want to have a working interview for. Usually you're struggling for that one, especially maybe two. Today's, especially in today's workforce. And it's a lot less expensive or an investment to pay $100 then five and ten thousand dollars to the recruiter to find you that person that you really don't know because what you're buying is a resume. All right. So probation really can also broadly be defined as a trial period for newly recruited workers and they last three months, six months, a year, however you want that to define and it's usually a fixed period of time, though, at the beginning of the uh, of the enrollment and employment relationship where the employee is exempt from some contractual items because you might say benefits don't start until three months holidays don't start till three months pto may not start now, for three now jay taking exactly what you're saying would you then say that the employee is able to and allowed to accumulate their pto they just can't take it so in other words if they couldn't take it until three months but they're still working for days one through 90. so they're still well, able to that now that's a good question mara but and in some states and commonwealths there is no mandate of PTO and vacation. Some, you don't have to offer PTO and you yeah. don't have to offer vacation. In Arizona, in California, there are minimum mandatory requirements. And we're not gonna get into that because this is not about a PTO podcast. This is about probationary 
podcast. You got it. You That's got a whole it. totally different, or else we won't have any time left to talk about probation. You got it. So um, with that, I always feel that you have to treat a probationary employee as an employee. They're not a prospect any longer. Mm -hmm. All right. So when you have that working interview where we really kind of like went off the beaten path for a second, but I want to close that portion of that, of the podcast off on that. Absolutely. Um, where I define whether you pay them or you don't, I always err on the side of precaution and say, pay them, pay him, pay her, whatever it is. However, the real ruling would be if you are asking this prospect to observe mm -hmm versus actually performance in the engagement of services that might otherwise be done by a paid employee. So if you're asking that medical assistant to be your medical assistant and hand you instruments or your professional surgical tech to be in the OR and work as a surgical tech, SCRUB as an acronym, I want to be respectful to those people that don't like that term, or an SFA, surgical first assist, versus standing in the background, similar to the type of a circulator, but not in the performance or engagement of any professional services, maybe you could get away with that. I, on the other hand, always paid everybody that came in for a working interview, because it is called a working interview versus an observational interview. I really define the differences. If it's a working interview, I want to see how you work. I don't want to see how you observe. All right. You know, and, and Jay, you and I could get in it. And this is actually a great topic. So we're going to have a whole other podcast in the future to be recorded on really whether who should perform what procedures during the working interview and how to find a good candidate in that realm. But let's Let's close out the working interview as, as you suggest. Otherwise, I'm going to keep asking you questions, Jay. So let's talk about pay during a probationary period. Yes, we're back to the 90 days. All right. Yes, you're paid. And you are paid at the negotiated salary or pay that you clearly defined in your offer letter. Now, in your offer letter, we create literally hundreds of those all right, in the course of a year, two years, where uh, let's say it's an offer letter and not a contract. The reason, and I'm all, this is all I'm going to say about that, the reason is it's not a contract because you're not going to be held accountable for the engagement of a legal contract, but an offer letter, whereas in a right to work state or commonwealth term, the employment can be terminated at any time, even outside of the probationary period, except in Canada, there is no right to work. And I want to be fair to both countries. All right. And then, of course, certain states, commonwealths, and in Canada, provinces, all right, have different laws. During that time, yes, you're paid. And in the offer letter, you can clearly state very easily what the hourly or expected salary will be during the probationary period. And if you're going to give an increase, in pay, hourly or salary, post probationary period, clearly define that in the offer letter. So for the first 90 days, you will get this. After 90 days, you will get this. You will then be subject to bonuses or discretionary bonuses or, you know, after 30 days, when we write a lot of them during your probationary period, you will get this. At three months, you will get an increase to this. Either in a year you will go to this, or at three months you'll get this, six months you'll get this, at a year you'll get that, and then it's annual. Why do I do that? It is a path to an increase in compensation where somebody isn't always looking at you, shaking your hand with the right, and looking at you with their hand out to the left. And I hear this all the time. Do I get a cost of living raise? That's another podcast. All right. No, there's no cost of living now that COVID is somewhat over. We would have reduced it, cost of living because of gas prices, another podcast. However, I like to have a path for increased compensation that is not necessarily tied to a performance review. 
because you must, there's no law, but I believe you must do a performance review upon the termination of probationary period. And Jay, you're not talking about termination of employee. You're not talking about an exit. You're not talking about an exit interview. You're talking about, just so I want everyone to be clear, you're talking about at the 90-day period. Performance review. Correct. And I encourage everybody to make sure that all of this is in writing. So you want it in writing that this is what is expected. And so the employee knows that this is coming, that it needs to be a goal and a priority for the employer. So whether that is a practice manager or the owner, but it needs to be a priority because so often I hear, oh no, everything's going fine. We don't need to do that review. And they say this purely because people don't have time. Honestly, they say, and I'm, well, they say that they don't have time. We know how important it is. And so when this happens, a year and a half later, you say, the, we hear employers come back and they're telling us, well, this was an issue from the start. This was always an issue. And this could have been documented in this 90 day probationary period. And it wasn't. So how are we supposed to know that this was an issue from the start? Bad habits are usually created in the beginning. Either you acquired bad habits or you came to us with bad habits. And during that 90 day probationary period is truly when we're going to resolve that or at the probationary period, the probation is terminated, and so are you. Yes, we are going to take a slight break, a slight intermission, because what kind of business would we be if we didn't tell you about our own services? I want to take a minute and talk to you about the Converging Cascade course and all that it has to offer. We want you to be trained to acquire loyal patients and boost your revenue in your aesthetic practice. Now, with our Conversion Cascade online course, you and your team will be able to master two key things important to growing your aesthetic practice and becoming successful, acquiring patients and retaining new patients. So let's talk about a couple of things as a step-by-step sales funnel training. The course is designed specifically to help you and your team attract more patients, convert more calls to consults, convert consults to treatments and procedures, and to keep your patients coming back for more. Not only will our Conversion Cascade course help to strengthen and develop your team's phone and sales skills in order to acquire, convert, and retain loyal patients, it will serve as a valuable onboarding training tool for every new team member that joins your practice. Yes, every new team member that joins your practice. Plus, in the course, you will receive downloadable marketing checklists, phone scripts, conversion tracking tools, and more. So sign up for the course to get started on increasing your revenue and acquiring and retaining new and existing patients. Yes, how to acquire and how to keep them coming back for more. It only takes approximately four hours to complete. You can finish it at your own pace and you'll have lifetime access. Yes, that is for the lifetime of the course. And a special thank you for being our podcast listener. We'll give you 20% off. Yes, 20% off. Just enter the discount code podcast. Yes, podcast to start saving now. So click on the link in our show notes to sign up for the Conversion Cascade online course and start acquiring more patients now. Now, why do I say a performance review that doesn't have to be compensatory? All right. But it can be because in the offer letter that we started, it's clearly stated that for the first three months, you will get this And then upon your probationary period, this allows you to start low, all right, and increase during the term, you know, at the termination of the probation. Now that you see that the performance level is somebody that you want to keep on your staff, hire slow, fire quick, all right, don't let it linger. Now, why do I love the performance review? Because I always use the example and I loved school, and I always looked forward to my report cards. And I mean always looked forward, because I loved school. 
And when you love something that you do, you're usually very good at it. So I loved getting report cards because I loved bringing them home because my Aunt Betty would give me 50 cents for every A and my Aunt Dolly would give me a dollar. So I used to be able to cash out, all right? Now this goes to tell you how far back that is when Aunt Betty would give me 50 cents for everything. Now knowing Aunt Betty, I'm, I'm surprised and she probably didn't do it with as much of a smile as Aunt Dolly did. I'm just gonna <laughs> say, I know I know both of them. I They were both wonderful women. I'm gonna say Aunt Dolly probably gave that money with more of a smile, so. Well, Aunt Dolly had more money so she could yes. afford the dollar. There you go. But here's the thing. So that when you are able to give additional compensation post probationary because that's what you said in your offer letter. It allows you to really evaluate and never feel that you overpaid. Plus, you may be more apt to getting an employee who is willing to start a little bit lower during that probationary period because they know that there is a path to increased compensation. It's when there's not a clear path to increased compensation is when somebody says, I want it now. And we see this more and more. I have seen more and more cases at this point where there is not that, Jay, like you said, a very clear path. And I see employees 60 days after they're hired say, I want to raise. And it's because they say, look, this position, compensation for this position has gone up. And so now I want more money. It's gone up. And we will fully admit that it is crazy right now as far as the market and salaries and pay and what, especially on the provider side, what they are asking. But that being said, we are seeing this more and more. So I truly concur with you, Jay. Not, not that I often don't, but I truly concur when it says, or when you're saying this, is we need to make sure that there is something clear, concise, and you need it's to just be consistent. So, but let me share something else. Why? Because job descriptions can change during that probationary period. Example, I had a call this morning with a client that said to me, one of their um, probationary employees wants more money. And I said, why? And their answer was quite simple, that their job description that they were hired for, and this always bothered me, it's not in my job description, um, what did you do that as a sign? Really? But they were asked to do something like take inventory. And the person said, I'm not paid to do inventory. Now, it is a good thing that I wasn't there because the one thing that I hate more than anything is an eye roll from anybody. It tells me exactly what you're thinking without you having to say anything. But I don't know how I might not have given an eye roll with my eyes lid shut so you couldn't see it when somebody would say that to me. Now, if truly the job description changes, then maybe they need to be recompensated for something. But let me get back to the report card for a second. During the course of my job, maybe I didn't know that I'm doing something wrong while I'm in that probationary period. And it is up to my supervisor slash manager slash administrator, who by the way, could be all the same person all in one, depending upon the size of your practice, didn't correct me. And the reason I use the report card is that there wasn't one report period during my elementary, junior high, see I'm dating myself, we didn't have middle school, elementary, junior high, high school, collegiate career, that I didn't know exactly what my grade was going to be at the marking period. Now, I may not have known if it was going to be an A minus or a B plus, because I didn't know if I had an 88 or an 89, if the teacher would be nice to me and round it up and give me the A. All right, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about not really doing your job. And I don't look for errors and mistakes, I look for opportunities. And it is up to the owner, the manager, the administrator, the supervisor that is managing this employee to review this on a continual basis and to give that performance review to share the opportunities that may be missed versus banging you on things that you didn't do. Don't tell me everything I'm doing wrong. Share with me how I might do my job better. I agree. I agree. And I think that Jay, just like you said, it's, it shouldn't be something that comes up at 
only the 90 day review. If this person, and we've seen all sorts of reasons and opportunities for improvement when it comes to that employee, but that should be addressed on the spot. Of course, you should be giving that feedback in private, not in public. So it shouldn't be that we berate that new person in front of all of their colleagues. That's just not good management. So that should be obvious, but I want to make sure that we're stating that. But Jay, I want to you know, come back as we near the end of our, our episode. Let's talk about what happens because you gave, you gave the optimistic side right? You gave the optimistic. This because is I'm an optimist. I know. And I'm going to get to the other half of that because you are an optimist and you gave about what happens if there is some areas of correction, but things that can be corrected. Because People, I'm a pessimistic optimist. Yeah, you I'm ruined my punchline. Oh, I'm sorry. I was getting there. But you, but everything that we went to with that scenario was truly if at the end, this employee is a, an employee we want to keep with us and how to continue to increase their pay and all of those good things. However, this is not always the case. Unfortunately, sometimes we know that that person for whatever reason is not going to be a fit in the practice, whether it is that they were never going to fit or whether there was a monumental life change at day 62. So whatever that looks like, let's say that this person is just not a fit. Jay, can you let us know in the pessimistic optimist phase, how do we handle that employee that during that period, whether it is day three or 83, what happens during that period? And is that dependent state to state? Is it different of what they would have to do in some states versus the other? Can you take that and answer? Um. Yeah, that's a really interesting question, too, because I don't think it would take me ever till day 82, all right, ever, to realize that. I'll know that in the first week or two. I can teach you knowledge. I can't teach you work ethic. This is, this is at this stage of our careers. I'm not talking about as a child, as a juvenile. I can teach both. But at this stage of the game when we're hiring people we really know all right what is in store and outside of zero tolerance items i may not understand and look didn't we just go through an incident which is very interesting where in a state where marijuana is legal we heard about the um one of the team members coming in they're doing gummy bears and gummy no 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 it's not a joke i no 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 and, it was yeah and you know these are zero tolerance items zero tolerance meaning alcohol drugs theft all right insubordination um drama you know um yelling at staff yelling at patients intolerable i have zero tolerance items for that but some work performances if you're not going to cut it if you're seriously not going to cut it, I have to shake your hand and wish you good luck in your career. Just not here. So Jay, can you give a couple specifics in that of what uh, to make sure to do, i.e. we, you know, in that exit process, and we're not going to go over when an employee leaves, we've actually done, I believe, an entire employee or an entire uh, podcast episode on that as far as what to do when an employee leaves or if you fire an employee. So we're not going to go into the details of changing. Laws what is them? Is that like 95, 125? What what episodes? We will put we'll put the episode in the show notes. How's that? <laughs> we'll put the episode in the show notes. OK, um, so so with that, though, so on top of the obvious of changing passwords and locks and, and keys and things like that. Um, let's talk about if an employee is asked to leave at, you know, prior to their, their 90 days, Jay, how is that different than if they're asked to leave three years in, whatever that looks like? I don't differentiate. Okay. I, I really don't. That you're, you're, you understand that this was a probationary period and it was not a mutual fit. I never ever say you don't fit. It is not a mutual fit. It's the old dating line. It's not you, it's me. 
Now, Jay, would you put, not it's not you, it's me, but would you put the verbiage about, unfortunately, it was not a mutual fit, and this is the end of us working together, would you put that in writing? No, would you... I would not. Um, after careful observation, we have decided not to continue in the furtherance of your employment. And you don't make it anything that's disparaging. Don't make it anything that could ever legally come back to bite you. You know, in a verbal conversation, you, because look, we have that with prospective clients, right? Sure where we have consults with our 30 minute free consult with a prospective client. And after that 30 minute interview, we determine it's not a fit for any number of reasons. Now, I don't really want to go into an engagement with a prospective client, like an employee on a probationary period. All right. Cause that never works out well, but with an employee, the understanding from day one, that it is probationary, you were being hired on as a prospective full-time slash part-time member of our staff with the understanding that once the 90-day probation period is over, and it could be discretionary, you could make that person and end the probation period at any time. It's for the, your protection. Number one, because in the offer letter, if you put down that you're not eligible for benefits, where's the 90-day come from? A lot of health insurance plans have a 90 day elimination period. So that's where that uh, unemployment goes by uh, earnings in a quarter. When is the quarter? Three months. All right. So usually it's that 90 day period is where everybody has come up with. Why did we come up with 90 days? Plus, you, you can really observe and know I can tell an employee whether they're going to stay with us even before they're hired we and i will say and i am the unfor unfortunately and this drives jay crazy the queen of but remember that one time with that one client that this happened and there's this one exception and jay often is like yes but that's that's an anomaly that's the exception not the rule so of course there are going to be exceptions here and there where they have traumatic life events we've unfortunately seen that happen with clients that have new new team members where there's a traumatic life event beyond their control however this is what we're talking about, what happens the majority of the time. I want you I to understand something, though, which is very important, even yes. within the 90-day period. Mm -hmm. A probationary period for an employee are entitled to all the rights, all right, that a standard employee is. So, example, if you hire a woman, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, but if you hire a female and she has to, it's on probation, on a probationary period, and she goes out on maternity leave, you are subject to everything that you would if it was a non probationary period. You are subject to workers' compensation rules and regulations. If that person gets hurt, injured, sick from a workplace incident on day one, all right? So I don't want you to think. Now, look, some people say, okay, well, 90 days before they're entitled to PTO. All right, well, you can accrue it, but you may not be able to take it. And I always believe when a person leaves, buy out their vacation, buy out their PTO, they'll never be subject to, I don't want to pay it. Pay it. All right. It will avoid a lot of problems later on. And with health insurance, they may not be entitled to it until the 91st day. And therefore, you don't have to worry about it. California, all right, they're entitled to three days of sick pay at a certain level. I'm not going into specific California laws. I'm not going into Arizona state laws. They're different, contingent upon the amount of people you have, FMLA. Everybody is entitled when you're an employee. The government, Department of Labor, uh, doesn't want to hear of probationary. And I will, I will say that I recommend everybody, you know, check into what is within your state, because again, we are speaking on a national level and I don't want this to be mistaken for legal advice. Um, although we, we know the guidelines, we ourselves are not lawyers and I wanna put that disclaimer out there again, even though I know we already put that out there. And so, provincial law, because it changes from province to province, absolutely. by the way. Absolutely. So with that, Jay. Oh, it's over? It's over. Oh, I'm having such a good time, I don't wanna leave. 
I know, but we have another call in just a few minutes. So okay. the, the life never ends for your favorite practice management <laughs> consultants. So with that, Jay, thank you as always, because you are just the most, the, the biggest wealth of knowledge in this industry. And we're so grateful to have you as my podcast partner too. With that, everybody, thank you again for joining us for another episode of Shore Solutions, the podcast. I am Mara Shore here with my pops, Jay Shore. And again, we are so grateful to get to do this with you. Touchdown. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. So acquiring, converting, and retaining new loyal patients is easier than you think. It requires you mastering the sales funnel in your aesthetic practice. How is it that easy, you ask? Well, it's easy because we teach you step-by-step in our Conversion Cascade online course, a fun and results-driven course that you and your team can finish in less than five hours. Yes, less than five hours because we know y'all are busy. We provide you six training videos that walk you through attracting new patients, converting calls to consults, consults to treatments, and keeping your patients coming back for more. All of this while learning how to talk to your patients about additional treatments and procedures to achieve their dream results and, bonus, boost your revenue and have them singing your praises to others. With our course, you also get tangible tools to help you succeed, such as downloadable marketing checklists, phone scripts, conversion tracking spreadsheets, and more, all of which are completely customizable and editable for you and your practice and your team. Get started and sign up for our Conversion Cascade online course today. And as a special thank you for being a podcast listener, we're giving you 10% off. Yes, 10% off. Just enter the discount code podcast. Yes, the word podcast to start saving. Click the link in our show notes to get started now increase revenue, and acquire more patients for your practice today. So that wraps up today's episode of Shore Solutions, the podcast. If we mentioned any quote links in our show notes, be sure to check them out for the easiest way to discover your best solutions. You can find them, yep, in our show notes. We love your help in spreading the word about our podcast. How? Rate us and share this episode with your friends, colleagues, and the rest of your team. Remember to follow us on social media at Shore Solutions and send us a message directly with your burning questions. We love hearing from you. Plus, sign up for our e-newsletter to be the first to find out about our upcoming webinars, the latest tips on running your practice more efficiently, dealing with the issues with drama and money in your practice, and watch the latest videos and blog posts in your inbox right in real time. Now's the time to join at www.shoresolutions.com and click on the e-newsletter button in the top right-hand corner. We'll see you next time. And remember, subscribe to this podcast and leave us a review.